Context-dependent cues are environmental cues, and it's important to emphasize this so that we're distinguishing context-dependent cues from state-dependent cues, which I'll talk about in a future clip. So we're talking about the sights, sounds, smells, etc., which act as a memory cue to help us retrieve the memories formed in that original context. So the more closely the retrieval cues, the sights, sounds, smells, etc., match the external environment or the context in which the encoding took place, the greater chance we have of recalling that information as illustrated by when we misplace our keys or maybe our iPhone and we're in the wrong context and we've got no idea where we left it and then all of a sudden maybe we visit the car and all of a sudden it all comes back to us. We put the iPhone, we put the keys in maybe the glove box, etc. So the context actually cues our memory of where we actually put those items in the first place. Godden and Badley did a classic experiment on this in the 70s using a repeated measures design. They got 18 experienced divers to listen to a series of words presented twice. They then were required to listen to 15 numbers read out and then they were asked to immediately write them down. So that distracting activity eliminated the use of maintenance rehearsal to keep it in STM. And then four minutes later, they were actually asked to recall the words. The results backed up the theory. When the retrieval context was the same as the encoding context, results were significantly higher. When there was a mismatch between the retrieval context and the encoding context, so they encoded on land and they were asked to retrieve on water, results were significantly lower.